Look, leave me all on red, that's some cold hold Then you hear me late at night, you support out, yeah But you already know that, yeah And I love it when you throw that, yeah Shawty, where you sold at? Baby, where you goes at? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to today's video. Um, I've been gone for a couple of days. I just needed to take like a little bit of a mental reset. But I'm back and I wanted to just sit down and talk to you guys about moving forward after the breakup, um, things that are helping me. Um, if you're going through something similar, these are kinds of the steps that I've been taking that I have realized are putting me in a much better headspace. Um, a lot of you are here from my he finding out who cheated on Valentine's Day story time, um, which I feel like I say this in every video, but thank you guys so much for all of the loving comments and support on that video. Um, but yeah, I think the first thing that I'm realizing, um, since it, it was such a long relationship, the first step I needed to take was no contact. Um, and I'm just one of those people, I'm a Leo, naturally, I feel like I am very easy to just like block, delete, and move forward with the rest of my life. That's just kind of how I am, keep it pushing. But with this relationship, it kind of, it was different, right? Because it's not just like a situation ship or something that was easy for me to just not want to wake up and text this person all of the time because I had spent the past almost three years texting them every day, just them being a part of my everyday life. So it was a lot harder for me to just decide to stop doing that. And I think in a lot of ways, it was in my own kind of not wanting to accept the situation that I felt like, you know, if I just kept in contact, you know, I could kind of allow this person to help me move forward. But I realized it just turned into a toxic environment. Um, and I think had I maintained the contact and kept trying to work things out, um, we would have gotten into a toxic relationship. Because it's one thing to have a relationship end um, over cheating and things like that. And it's a whole nother thing to try and rebuild that. And every part of me wanted to do everything I could to possibly see if we could move forward. And I found myself just being in a very negative mind space all of the time. Um, instead of moving forward from the situation, that was the only thing that was on my mind. And I knew that if we moved forward, you know, it was going to be almost impossible for me to find it in me to trust again. And so I decided to go on my no contact and it's been wonderful. Um, I, it's like the first couple of days are the hardest, right? Because you just want to like reach out and just hear from that person, no matter how poorly they've treated you, just because you are like hanging on to whatever you think may be left of the relationship. And I'm telling you, if you had to walk away from it, there's probably not anything left for you there. And I had to understand that there was no longer room for me to grow. Um, and from this point forward, had I decided to continue on with the relationship, except that it was a one-time thing, um, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't because when people cheat, there are patterns. And that's what I realized. And that's why even though, you know, it was just, the, you know, the sex with this girl was the big, huge buildup. And that was like the big thing. I realized the patterns lied in the girls that he was talking to months prior and the ways that he had been talking to them. And it's like the best indicator of past behavior or sorry, gosh, the best indicator of future behavior is past behavior, right? So now I have to sit here and think, well, if I am going to continue a relationship, can I really forgive a pattern? Because now that is much, it's much bigger than just a, a one time. And I don't like to use the word mistake because cheating is not a mistake, but that's what I'm going to call it just for this analogy you know it's more than forgiving one mistake now I have to look at patterns and I have to see if this is really something that is worth my while because at the end of the day relationships are more than just a relationship it's an investment of your time of your money of your energy of who you are you know you're giving yourself in a lot of ways to another person and 
I had to decide if that was an investment I was willing to take again, and it wasn't. Because as much as I'd like to believe that people can change and that the relationship could go back to a good place, I have to trust in what I've been shown. And I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, like once you cheat, you always cheat or that people don't come back from that. But in my life, I'm not willing to be the sacrificial lamb that gets the good guy after she's been drugged through the ringer. That's just not what I'm going to do anymore. So I think my first piece of advice would be to, one, understand the reality of the situation and that the relationship you once had, you are not ever going to have again. And you have to think, is this something that I want to to have to deal with, essentially? You know, are you willing to put in the work that it takes to be a supportive partner and to be patient and truthfully to not be holding this over the person's head? You know, I think it's very unhealthy to stay in a relationship if you cannot 100% move forward. And honestly, it's just something that I can't. I can't do when I think of the relationship I think of just how different things would be the things that are in my mind that occupy my thoughts that never used to do that Um, trust issues that I never had I would now have and for me why would I go through that when I can just take the time to work on myself and essentially just one day meet a person that doesn't require me to have to lower my standards in order to allow this person to grow and be better. You know, I, I feel like I've spoken a lot about this recently about how a a man will break a good woman and become a better man because of it. And I'm such a firm believer in that because even if you go back to that relationship that wasn't good for you, that wasn't healthy for you, the, um, you know, the cheating and the lying and, you know, whatever situation you're in, Going back to that is a constant mental battle. And you might think that the relationship is growing and hell it might be, but are you losing yourself in the process? That's why I really do feel like, you know, men can change, but you will forever be the lesson. Sorry, guys. Honestly, the point that I was trying to make was that no matter how hard you try to repair what has been broken, And no matter how much change your person can make, it still ends up breaking you and breaking who you are in the process. And so that's why I think it's best to let yourself be a lesson, let your love be a lesson, let the relationship be a lesson to both of you and move forward. And if he can truly change and be better for the next person, good for him. But I don't have to be the person who sits and has to trust the process. You know, I'm going to trust in God and trust that God is going to bring me someone who is my equal. You know, someone who is of the same caliber as me. And I don't say that to bring anyone down or to say that this person, you know, was lower than me. But mentally and emotionally, I think I am a person who requires a lot more than he would ever be able to give. Um, But I don't want to keep rambling about our first point. If you're going through this right now, no contact. Don't text. Don't reach out. Take your time to learn how to live without this person again. You need to take that time away to remember who you were before them and to remember that life went on before them. And for a lot of us, we were in our prime and in our best places mentally, physically, emotionally before this person ever came into our lives. And so we trusted the timing. We trusted that God was moving and he was working and he was doing things for us. And and that could have been the case, but somewhere along the way, this person got lost. And in that and through that, you lost yourself. You know, um, I think a lot of us go through like the, the relationship weight gain and like, you know, you're not who you were when you started this relationship because how can you be you know essentially your whole life is kind of changed when you get into a serious relationship and I'm not saying that you're not your own person outside of it it's just like it takes a different requirement to commit yourself to another person versus being single and I'm a person where I give all of me you know and I love very proudly and um 
I don't know. I'm just one of those people where you're never going to have to question where my feelings are. And I wear my heart in my sleeve a lot, you know. So it's just been one of those things where I just had to understand that sure, I wanted to text, I wanted to do this, I wanted to hear from them, but just because I'm a person who, I don't want to say doesn't like being alone, but once you show me a taste of what it's like to not have to be alone, you know, I I prefer that. And so I had to remember how independent I can be without someone and how much I bring to the table just by myself. Um, so definitely, if you, not even if you can, because you can, bitch, you're watching this video, do not text that man. Do not text him. Just leave him alone. Leave him exactly where he had you fucked up at. Don't, you know, you don't have to stay in in the mindset of being hurt and disrespected. But remember the disrespect, okay? Remember the way that you felt and use that as fuel to not want to go back to it. Um, and something else that I has been really helping me is honestly just getting up every day and taking a shower and taking care of myself, you know, not even from like a hygienic perspective, but just getting ready for my day. Like today I sat down and I, I did my makeup and I remembered how much I love to just get ready, even if I'm not going anywhere. It just makes me feel really good about myself, you know? So doing the small things that used to make you happy before your relationship, try and do those things um, so that you can get back to that. And if you, if, even if it's finding new things, you know, it's been beautiful outside. I live in Illinois. So, you know, the weather is like all crazy every other, every other day, but we've had some really beautiful weather. So taking the time to go outside, <laughs> go outside, get some sun, get some vitamin D. Cause when I tell you being stuck in your apartment or in your house, when you're going through the worst possible times of your life makes it so and I understand we all need those days where we're just like just stuck in it, where we just feel it all and we go through those emotions. But at some point, you've got to pick yourself back up and remember that there is life outside of this and your life <laughs> is outside of this. You know, it's outside of your apartment. It's outside of your comfort zone. Like get outside, see your friends, allow people to be a support system to you in whatever way makes you feel comfortable. And for me personally, it wasn't like a whole rehashing the situation. I would rather be around people who can just help me move forward, who don't need to, you know, talk about the situation over and over and over again. So I surrounded myself with my friends who understood, you know, that the best thing for me was just to keep me distracted and keep me busy and just spend genuine time with me. Um, that's really helped. So don't feel like you need to stay in your bubble or in your, you know, depressy little circle as easy as it is to just want to just you know deny all the invitations and stay inside and not go out and for the first couple of days I did exactly that and I was the most miserable because all you have time to do is think and think and think get outside go shopping go do something that is even if it's going to just make you temporarily happy it's going to get your mind off of everything you're going through because throughout this process you're always going to have those days and those nights where you're stuck in your thoughts and you just wonder like why why, God, why would you allow this situation to happen? Why would you allow me to put my eggs in this basket, trusting that it was going to be for me and that it was, you know, for a a person that I, I saw my life with? You know, you, you were there, God. You listened to me pray about it. You listened to me cry about it. And why? You know, and I, I saw this quote the other day and it said, God is removing you from a table that was serving you poison. And so I had to understand that God gave me exactly what I prayed for. I prayed for this person. I prayed for a relationship. I prayed for happiness with this person. And I had that. I got that. And he did things that made it an unsafe space for me to care about him any longer. But I can't blame God because God gave me exactly what I asked for. And he just showed me that what I was asking for may have not been what I needed and this person wasn't for me and sometimes God will bring you through your worst possible heartbreak just to make you recognize you are worth more the things that you settled on the beginning you don't need to settle for and God was sitting there watching you settle he was watching you change little things about yourself to accommodate to this person so that you could be someone that they were capable of loving even though you were everything and more 
to begin with. You didn't need to change anything about yourself. You didn't need to lower your standards. You didn't need to change your boundaries and to lessen your boundaries because the right person is going to come into your life and they're going to be perfectly okay with all of your boundaries. In fact, they might have some of the same ones and they're going to understand that loving you is a gift and it's not something that comes for the week. It's not something that is for the, I don't want to say the easy people, but for people who are just looking for a fun time, you know, like you are not that girl. And there's a lot of girls out there that are like that and that's fine. They just would rather date and have fun. And I've been through that and I'm telling you it's not all that because you are so much more and you are so much worthier. Okay. And I genuinely feel like there's something very special about women who have a heart for God because at the end of the day, you can go through the hardest times of your life and still be everything that makes you special and you can still see a little bit of light in the darkness and hope. And sure, people will always talk about how you can't be too nice in this world or like that's why you get taken advantage of. And I get that a lot. I get the whole you're too nice, you're too sensitive, you're too this, you're too that. And for a while I thought like maybe I need to change, maybe I need to adapt to to the way people are acting towards me. Maybe I need to adjust according to their behavior. But I realized when you do that, you are losing yourself. That's not who I am. You know, the things that other people look at me and think are weaknesses are my biggest strengths, my compassion, my my <laughs> optimistic look on life and how I think that there is hope for everybody out there and that there is so much more so many bigger things to be living for than than just settling you know there's so much more to life and there's so many opportunities to bless others and be blessed by others and just go through life experiences with other people and teach them things about you so every time someone hurt me as much as i wanted to retreat and go back to the little girl me who was too shy to say how she felt or felt insecure crying because crying is weakness. I had to understand that those parts of me are are the best parts of me and they're what make me who I am, you know, and it's how I show my love and my my care and my my heart. I wear my heart out here for everyone to see and I can't shield that because people don't know what to do with it or because some people haven't experienced the level of love and, and faith I have in my life. They, they don't have the same upbringing. They are not me. And so I can't change myself just because I don't fit in with the rest of the world. And you don't need to change yourself if you feel like everyone else is doing something and it's working for them or who you are is the reason you get treated poorly. I promise it's not. <laughs> Trust that you have such a bright light aura around you that draws people in and people with healing spirits often attract a lot of broken people because you just have that about you and i can speak from experience because that's me and i'm a forgiver i will i swear that's been like my biggest word my entire life is i forgive i forgive i forgive i forgive and sometimes you get tired of being the girl that forgives and so what i've realized is i can forgive this person for who he was to me and the ways that he hurt me. I can forgive those actions, but I don't have to stay. And I think as I've been praying about this over and over and over and over again, the biggest thing that God has told me is you have forgiven and that it's all that you can do. That it's, it's like it, that's the end of your road. You forgive this person and you walk away. And so that's that's what I'm doing. Um, and I feel lighter and brighter about it. I feel like I'm tapping into the spiritual side of me that I've missed for so long because this person wasn't spiritual or religious or anything. And that's fine. That was a risk I was willing to take. But I realized it showed me how unequally yoked we were. Um, and I'm sure he'll be a great person, a great partner for somebody else who maybe thinks a little more like him or is just equipped in the ways that he needs somebody to be and it's just not me and you know it's kind of just one of those things you have to accept and I think my final piece of advice for people going through a breakup 
you have to just look forward. It, it sounds really, you know, like, yeah, sure, Alyssa, that's a lot easier said than done. Stop revisiting the past. Stop revisiting the things that you were holding on to, the reasons that you're holding on to this relationship. Just stop. Just let it go. And it's going to be an everyday journey because like I said, there are going to be days where you wake up and you just want to be selfish and have everything that you thought you had. You want to just experience it, just to go back and be in the moment where you felt loved and cared about and you looked in this person's eyes and saw your future. You want to go back to that. But you can't because that's not what it is and that's not what it was and the relationship ended for a reason, okay? Um, And if it's something, you know, where maybe it's not cheating like I'm going through, maybe it's something that's a little more, I don't want to say forgivable because I think everything you know, is, is relative. I think if you feel in your heart, like this person is meant for you, take your time apart and trust that God will bring you back together if it's meant to be. And if it's not, then you're going to take your time away and you're going to be your own person and most likely find someone else along the way. (laughs) You know, I don't know. It's just, it's just life. So I just kind of, sorry if you hear my stomach, I haven't eaten anything. I wanted to make this video for the girls who are going through it and who are struggling and who just are not at a state of peace. Try and find peace in something, in anything, you know? And if you need to to glow up, if you need to go, you know, buy yourself a new outfit, get some new makeup, you know, make yourself feel good, feel pretty again, you know? And for the people specifically recovering from a relationship where you were cheated on stop comparing okay take those girls off of your social media or get off of social media stop stalking her page stop looking stop trying to wonder what it was about you that caused him to do this because i there is nothing about you there's nothing there's nothing (laughs) um and you know just like don't allow yourself to go down that rabbit hole because it doesn't end and it's just gonna keep going until your mental health just feels like what am I doing I wake up and like what am I doing in life don't allow yourself to get to that point okay you are a queen and you are worthy of so much more and I just wanted to make this video for the girls who are going through it and needed to hear it um so yeah guys I'll definitely be pumping out some more videos this week I'm thinking some story times I kind of want to do a series um one on the relationship that I spoke about recently in my story time I kind of want to have a series for that relationship as well as my first relationship which was the most toxic ever you know so I'm kind of thinking of making story times about that um so yeah guys if you like this video just leave a like comment subscribe and leave any video recommend Oh my gosh, I'm sorry guys. Leave any video recommendations um, and if you guys ever have any questions about, you know, what I'm wearing or hair or anything like that, just let me know in the comments and I can start putting links in the description box. So yeah, thank you guys. I will see you in the next one.